The elite piece is on the Houston Texans. Is CJ Stroud one? Plus, there's some things that we may be overlooking when it comes to this squad, plus some intriguing visits that lead to speculation before the drafts. Go inside the locker room. Yeah. Yeah. It's the locker room on YouTube. You know what it is. Let's get it. Hey. Locker room. Yeah, we in the locker room. Texas talk. All yeah, right. You know what we Final ish countdown till the draft. Uh, we're on the straightaway. Uh, we're two weeks and change away. A lot of questions, a lot of visits with the Houston Texans. Uh, safety appears to be very much in the mix. Should it be? What are some things that the Texans are overlooking? Uh, what are the elite things that the Texans have on their football team? We'll get into uh, that and a lot more in another edition of the locker room uh, here uh, on YouTube. You can hear me Monday through Friday, 10 to 2 Central, Sports Radio 610, uh, as well as the Odyssey app. Subscribe, like, ride along for the best Texans coverage um, in the country. Draft picks right now for the Texans. Uh, you have the 42nd pick, the 59th pick, and the 86th pick. Uh, and then you have a couple fourth rounders, a sixth and three sevenths. Uh, the Tavondre Sweat news, I, I don't know if y'all have been keeping up with it, but there keeps like more and more keeps getting put out, um, including the amount of alcohol. I guess it was 25% over the legal limit. Uh, there's talk that perhaps the crash was worse than initially thought. Uh, and, and the old, the old party habits are, are re-emerging with Tavondre Sweat to the point where I don't know how much these reports matter, how much did he drink, all that type of stuff, uh, but but it does seem like the Tavondre Sweat thing um, has been interesting uh, because now it, it, it all, I'm almost wondering if he's even going to go on day two at this point. I mean, with all these questions and the questions that already existed, I'm I'm almost wondering if if Tavondre Sweat ends up sliding into day three. That might sound crazy, but does it really? Um, I know a lot of people yesterday were open to the second, second, and the third. Uh, there's there's some belief that perhaps he's not the type of defensive lineman that D'Amico Ryan's is looking for. I don't know whether that's true or not. Uh, but but I'm starting to I'm starting to think that there's a possibility that he falls uh, perhaps even later. And and I don't know whether, you know, how much he had or how much he didn't or anything really changes anything in the. Uh, in the big scheme of things, uh, but I, I would just keep an eye on that. That's some of the bigger news uh, when it comes to the. Uh, when it comes to the. Um, to the Texans. Um, final uh, final uh, piece of uh, draft information. I saw the Texans uh, hosted Auburn safety Jalen Simpson. Um, this is uh, one of a couple of SEC safeties um, that the Texans have hosted. Uh, I, the, the first guy with the news was actually Justin M. NFL, whoever that is. Uh, he actually reported it. I think Aaron Wilson had it a few hours later, uh, but, but Justin M NFL, uh, had that. So, so they hosted, uh, Jalen Simpson. They also hosted Javon Bullard of the university of Georgia. So, so they appear to be at least eyeing safeties. Now Bullard might be a guy that you have to take with that first, uh, draft selection, uh, if he ends up being there, I've seen him ranked anywhere from one to three when it comes to safeties. Uh, is is safety something that the Texans uh, should be interested in? I think based on what happened last year, uh, I would definitely say that it's something that they they can't ignore. I, I don't. I mean, even in the best case scenario, um, what what are you going to get from Petrie? And what are you going to get from Jimmy Ward? So safety appears to be some sort of a possibility uh, for the Texans. Um, the the popular name, uh, Kool-Aid McKinstry, I think Aaron Wilson said that they uh, hosted him. Uh, he has the injury, the foot injury. It's not the Liz Frank that Stingley had, but he has the foot injury. Uh, he's a big school guy like they tend to like. Uh, and he's also... Uh, 
would be pretty good opposite Derek Stingley if he projects uh, to the best case scenario that a lot of people uh, are projecting. Um, they also had a random hosting of Spencer Rattler, uh, the South Carolina quarterback formerly at Oklahoma. This would be a day late day three, maybe even undrafted situation. I mean, they're, they're not going to use a day two pick on a guy like a Spencer Rattler. Uh, I have actually followed him for quite a while. He he made kind of a fool of himself on the QB1 series on Netflix. He was just a kid, though. Um, OU didn't go according to plan. Obviously, Caleb Williams came there, kind of ran him out of town. Uh, and, and he seems to have matured a little bit. Still some unrealized potential. Still pretty inconsistent. But this would just be a tire kick. I, I don't really know if they need a quarterback, but... Right now, their backup quarterback situation is pretty up in the air because Case Keenum's not getting any younger, and Davis Mills is in the final year of his deal. So what will they do uh, at quarterback? Do they, do they look at it as, you know, you get this guy for four years and maybe he develops into a good backup perhaps? Uh, but I wouldn't read uh, too much into it. I think Davis is the good backup. I think he's better than Case Keenum right now. Uh, and we'll we'll see there. But, I mean, that, that could just be kind of a – both of these guys are going to be gone. You get a cheap backup quarterback, uh, perhaps a project with – I guess it's unrealized potential at this point, but I feel like we've been saying that about Rattler uh, for for quite a while. I, I got to confess, though, uh, I've been and, – and I think you've all went on this ride with me last year. Um, the The whole – quarterback thing in the draft i've i've ignored it almost in a, in a calculated manner i've avoided anytime there's dialogue about it i just don't really care because it's it's kind of relaxing to not have to get involved in that uh merrill hodge says drake may will get someone fired um Jaden daniels is going to be the guy he he should be number one caleb williams did this I've, I've just kind of avoided the whole quarterback thing. Um, I'll, I'll get back into it eventually, but it's it's kind of nice to have a little bit of a gap. Uh, the other crazy thing about the draft and, and almost the good thing about not having a first-round pick is, well, not having a first-round pick when you have a second and you added Stephon Diggs. I'll make that clear. Um, but, but the good thing about it is – these aggregators, and, and I don't know how this happens, but whether it's the JP football, uh, NFL retweet, uh, I think Dove Kleeman got caught. Did he get called out by JJ Watt today? Someone told me he did. I'm, I missed that. I haven't, I haven't really been on Twitter today. Uh, but I heard that JJ Watt, um, called out Dove Kleeman, which would be pretty funny. Um, Let's see. Okay, yes, this is it right here. Uh, JJ Watt calls out Dove. Let's see what we got. Uh, he said, these are the types of accounts that people actually follow slash believe for NFL news and takes these days. Uh, a, that's uh, David Blau, not Colt McCoy. B, WTF is a perfect quarterback with no arm strength and no athleticism. Uh, don't listen to this ish uh, just because it's got a blue check. I, I've never understood the blue check thing. I had a blue check from the beginning, and I never bragged about it. I never cared about it. I never put people who had blue checks on a pedestal. So I don't even know what what that even matters uh, as far as what JJ's speaking. The blue check now, it's really just for, for security. Uh, and to be able to do long videos. I've I've seen some guys, well, you bought a blue check mark. I mean, people bought it because you get longer video and it's it's safer. It seems like it keeps you more safe in the algorithm. And some of the people knocking it, if if you don't have any platform, like you don't have anything else going for you, it, it almost seems like you you should. But yeah, I don't I don't think the blue check mark um really matters. Uh got a super, appreciate you, my friend. Uh, looks like you're getting that work in in the gym. Uh, dietology. Um, John Mechie deserves another year. I got a feeling. Oh, man. I I love John Mechie. I like talking to John Mechie. I like how candid John Mechie is. I like how charismatic John Mechie is. I like 
the way in which John Mechie appears to get along with his teammates. Uh, he and I both are big fans of Rafi Spot Craft Pita, uh, which is really good, clean eating grub, uh, always doing some innovative stuff on weekends. So Mechie and I, I have that in common. I, I just don't know where he fits in, though, if we're talking about this. And, and that's the one thing that's going to be interesting with this receiving core. You know who the top three are. Um, you know who uh, – you know that you have Noah Brown. Noah Brown has been there at times, and CJ's trusted him. So he's kind of your four. Uh, and you can also get in the slot as well. You have Robert Woods. Maybe you get rid of Robert Woods, perhaps. Don't know. Uh, and then you have Hutchinson. I, I just don't know where Mechie fits in. I saw that there was some talk about, you know, perhaps trade for John Mechie or whatever. I, okay, what do you think he is? Where does he fit in? What is he good at? I mean, I actually, and this this might just be because I'm close to the situation, I actually think if it's the sixth or seventh round and Jordan Whittington's there, I think he could beat Mechie out. I think he's uh, got a little bit more explosiveness. I think he can do a lot more, and he, and he can play any special teams that you want. Uh, so I don't know. Like, Mechie's not really a special teams guy. That's the other thing is if you're getting pushed further back in the wide receiver depth chart, what else can you bring to the table? I, I don't know, and I don't know that they really need him uh, as far as, like, the true slot guy. So I like Mechie. I won't root against him. Uh, but I wouldn't bet on him would be the best way that I would put that. Appreciate you, my friend. Um, Techno Stone, the traveler. I hope they don't sign Dalvin Cook. He's dumpster juice. I saw someone tagged me on this, um, and they tagged me with Stutes, and they tagged me with that guy who does YouTube videos like and just chases clicks from Dallas or whatever. He didn't even like build the channel. Um, and they asked me about uh, Dalvin Cook. My my thing with Dalvin Cook is uh if like if if Joe Mixon got hurt, then I could see you bringing in Dalvin Cook if if you're desperate and you need someone to take a large chunk of the carries. Now, hopefully you you've added another back that can make plays perhaps in the draft to where maybe that's not even an option. But the only scenario where I would I would consider bringing in Dalvin Cook is if we figure out that Damian Pierce uh, th th just isn't a system fit and there's been no improvement had and if Mixon got hurt because you want your running backs to be able to do multiple things, uh, especially if they're going to be backing up Joe Mixon. And Dalvin Cook has already shown that he's not very happy being a committee guy. I, the, the quote I saw the other day with Aaron Wilson was, I'm still Dalvin Cook. I'm still that dude. I'm still the four-time Pro Bowler or whatever. That's his mindset. He's not better than Joe Mixon. And we don't know what's going to happen with Damian Pierce. I agree with you. I, I don't think that signing Dalvin Cook, you know, sometimes people will say, um, people will say that uh, the uh, Dalvin Cook or that um, people say that Dalvin Cook is. Still has a little bit something left. I don't. I don't think he has anything left, uh, and I, I don't think he really works out. And then you'll hear people say, "Well, you know, you're just going for names when you throw out like Xavier and Howard." And sometimes I think people just use that a little bit loosely to to counter like a player they don't want. Like I don't think bringing in Xavier and Howard to be your second corner is like just chasing a name. But I, I do think Dalvin Cook. The idea of Dalvin Cook, I think that's one hundred percent. Uh, just a name. Stephen Harris says John Mechie to the Carolina Panthers uh, help Bryce Young out. Help him out how? I mean, how? Like, he, um, is he going to go out there and smash or what? Or just because they know each other from college? Um, okay. Uh, not really a big uh, fan of that. Uh, Favorite primetime possibilities. I'm going to get into that tomorrow on the show. That's funny. That's actually on the run sheet. Uh, Mr. Robot, from their recent visits, I think they're looking at linebackers lately, which tells me more about their draft strategy after digs. I saw a few edge defenders in there safety. Yeah, it seems like they're looking at some defensive guys. Um, but they can still they can still draft guys that they don't have uh, come in. 
Um, is CJ Stroud elite? We remember this. This was kind of a bit back in the Joe Flacco days. Is Joe Flacco elite? He played for a for a few days. My my are are a few years before that. My question would be this: When it comes to this question, what is elite? What is an elite quarterback? Who in the NFL right now is an elite quarterback? We know of one. Who else is elite? What does elite mean? Does it mean they have to have success in the playoffs? Does it mean they have to um, be near the top? Like, is Josh Allen elite? I know he just lost Diggs, but is Josh Allen elite? Is Joe Burrow elite? What is elite? Would would be the question. I I've gotten this question a couple of times, and furthermore, we got to see if C.J. Stroud survives in that tier, in that second tier. He played, you know, he played right there in that second tier this year. We got to see if they've given him enough weapons to where he can do that, uh, and we got to see uh, if if C.J. Stroud takes that next step. But my my question would be, who is elite? That that would be my question. Who exactly is uh, elite. Uh, my, I, I would say you can say Josh Allen, you could say Lamar Jackson, you could say Joe Burrow, and then CJ's kind of knocking on the door uh, there. I don't know that there's an elite quarterback in the NF in the uh, NFC. Although I think like kind of the knocking on the door quarterbacks, I'll 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 never think two is elite. I'm sorry, I like Tua a lot. I root for Tua. Just don't look at him as elite. That's just me. Dak Prescott, not elite. Good. Um, but I think that there's a, the the three guys that are knocking on the door and could be good years away from joining uh, that elite group. Uh, CJ, Jordan Love, and Justin Herbert. I'm interested to see how Harbaugh handles Justin Herbert and how they handle that situation. But I, I would say CJ Stroud is he elite? Not yet. Uh, could he be? Could he be there? Uh, perhaps uh, someone says Jalen Hurts and golf. I I don't think so. I think Jalen's played his best ball already. Um, golf, uh, don't see that. Uh, yeah, I think Jordan Love is uh, for sure. I absolutely I absolutely think Jordan Love is is right there, um, knocking on the door. Uh, NFL Network playing the Texans versus Buccaneers game right now. This makes me feel so much more confident. And then Sponge this year. Yeah, that was a crazy game. Um, biggest play of that game was the Noah Brown. I think the Noah Brown 80-yard touchdown response uh, with the tank block, I think, was the was the biggest play of that game. Um, completely handled that. Uh, so we'll, we'll see uh, who is... Uh, not elite. I do not think Dak Prescott is elite, uh, for sure. But yeah, is CJ elite? Not yet. Uh, is there hope for CJ to be elite? Uh, yes. Do the Texans have anything that's elite? That's the question. Is there anything on this Texans? Like, if you were listing the elite things that the Texans have, what what would you say? I would start with the head coach. I, I think D'Amico Ryan's is elite. I think he runs an elite program. Uh, I think it. I think it rubs off on the on the players. Um, I, is he an elite defensive coordinator? He's had success, uh, but I don't even judge him by that. I think as far as being a head coach, as far as being open minded, as far as having his hands in everything, uh, I think D'Amico Ryan's uh, is elite. One year or not, I think he is, and I'm not. I'm not even judging it based on uh, based on wins losses. Uh, I think they're elite at the edge. I think I think the starting edge guys. I, I don't know that there's too many teams that have better duos than that. I, I know the Chargers brought back Bosa and Mac. Uh, Bosa's had trouble staying on the field. Mac's coming off a career high in sacks, which is freaking crazy uh, for how long he's been in the league. So I would say their starting edge guys are elite. I would say they're. Top three at wide receiver are elite. Are any of those guys actually elite receivers? Uh, the question would would reemerge: What is an elite receiver? I would say you look at Jefferson, you look at Tyree Kill, that caliber. Uh, not quite there yet, but as far as one to three, that's elite. So the edge elite, the one to three receivers, that's elite. Uh, CJ potentially elite. D'Amico elite. Derek Stingley's something that is asked about, and and this is 
this is hard for me because this is going to bring me to the next topic. Uh, they have elite special teams too, um, as well. Uh, I would say that uh, they have elite special teams as a whole. In the last two years, uh, it's kind of be it's kind of been uh, been brought up. So the the Derek Stingley thing is interesting because. We got a taste last year of Derek Stingley playing elite football. Uh, if if Derek Stingley did that for 14, 15, 16, 17 games, he's a first-team All-Pro, and he's perhaps even in defensive player of the year discussion, uh, assuming it doesn't go to an edge guy. The problem is we saw Derek Stingley, the streak continue of him missing in a handful of football games each season, and I think we kind of forgot about it. And when, when you talk about what they've done at corner and they're kicking the tires on a couple of guys who were, for lack of a better term, busts from the 2020 draft and Okuda, Henderson, uh, et cetera, it, it almost feels like we're looking at the number two corner as, well, you know, if he can be serviceable, he's going to be opposite Stingley, so he's not going to have to handle his business. But my thing is, if the trend continues, it's not even a trend. If the reality continues, with uh with the Stingley missing a few games, then these guys are gonna have to be number one corners. And then you're gonna have to start both Henderson, King or King, and Akuda. So are we kind of underlooking just based on how awesome Stingley was and how available he was down the stretch? Are we kind of underthinking? The corner situation, I, I would say so. Unless you just feel really good about Akuda, Akuda could be end up being fine. Can he hold it down like Steven Nelson did last year? I don't know. I don't think Steven Nelson now could hold it down like he did last year. I think he's cooked. But I do think we're kind of underthinking uh, the this need for that. Uh, running back, I, I think that's being underthought as well. Look. You got Joe Mixon, that's great. You're replacing Devin Singletary. It's it's an upgrade. He's a more complete back. You need multiple running backs that can make plays. Ideally, you need three guys who can make plays on any Sunday. Uh, even if that means Damian Pierce establishes himself as a guy and come in and take four carries or something like that, or short yardage. Uh, ideally, you want a guy that can come in and be a factor in the pass game. Hell, maybe a guy that can carry the ball double-digit times. You look around the league, most teams, if not all, have it. Texans haven't had that in a long time. You need multiple running backs that can make plays. You know, we can cross our fingers and hope that Damian Pierce comes back. Are you really going to rely on that? Just like are you going to rely on the health of Derek Stingley? I think these things are being underthought. Uh, those are two things that I think that. Uh, tight end, I think, is being underthought as well. Uh, Brevin Jordan, he, he had some really, 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 really good uh, stretches. He had some some nice plays. Uh, look, I think Brevin Jordan is a valuable piece. Is Brevin Jordan someone that you feel good about as your second tight end? Can't block. You line him up at H back. A lot of times he gets lost. He's really not a great receiver. When he's open, he knows how. He's he's got more speed than most tight ends. Hell, he came up as a running back. But it's not like you you just put Brevin Jordan in the slot and watch him do work. You have a really good receiving tight end in Dalton Schultz, and then you have a guy in uh, Brevin Jordan who did a great job last year uh, of surviving and then contributing on the highest stage. But do you trust Brevin Jordan to be your number two tight end? I don't think you should. I absolutely don't think you should. I don't think you should overreact to that. I think they should be looking out for a tight end. And I don't even think it has to be a blocking tight end. Uh, Johnny says we need a blocking tight end. I don't think they need to look at it like that. I think they just need to look at as getting another tight end that can make plays uh, in a traditional tight end sense, uh, not not the gimmicky Brevin Jordan stuff. If that means uh, Sanders, uh, if that means uh, Stroud's boy uh, from Ohio State, uh, then so be it. But they need they need a tight end. They just need a tight end that can play. And if that's a two-year plan, I was talking about this today. Like, if if they drafted Jatavian Sanders, they might not like the blocking, but he's better than Brevin Jordan. Then you can bring in a blocker and make Brevin Jordan fight for a roster spot. Because 
Jatavian Sanders, like if you told me two years from now, Jatavian Sanders is going to be as good of a receiving tight end as Dalton Schultz, I don't think it would be the craziest thing. He can go up and get it. He's got athleticism. Uh, the toughness, I think, is undervalued. Uh, I, I think he's going to be like a Dalton Kincaid. Now, he visited with the Panthers today, and I think he visited with the Browns. But if if he's there and you like him, I, I don't look at that as a – don't go. you can go find a blocking tight end anytime. But if, if you want to talk about getting two tight ends that can make plays, I think that would be great. Uh, they need to figure something out. Stover from Ohio State. Yes, he basically said he owed his life to CJ. Um, one of his uh, one of his favorite guys that, that he is. Maybe Quinteriano <laughs> uh, steps up this season. He can't stay healthy. I like Quinteriano. I've been, I've been the Quinteriano, the head of the Quinteriano um, fan club. Uh, but um, I don't know about that. Uh, I don't know. It seems CJ has a habit of starting his pro, uh, I'm assuming you're saying progressions from left to right. Could this be a future problem? I, I don't know. I don't know what you're saying, dude. I think your name might have said, I, don't, I have no idea what that means. Left or you want him to go right to left instead? I don't know. You tell me, sir. Uh, no idea what the heck um, that means. But yeah, I think these things could be underthought. Uh, stuff that could be being overthought. And this this was brought up today on the show in the loop, Sports Radio 610. You can see it on YouTube right right, uh, right here. Uh, you can hear it on the Odyssey app and on Sports Radio 610. Um, are we overthinking whether or not Stephon Diggs is going to be the most productive receiver on this team? I like Nico Collins. I like what he did this one year. But even in Stephon Diggs' quote down year, the production wasn't that much different uh, than what Nico did uh, in his career year. Do you think that perhaps we're overthinking this? Because I threw out the question, who's going to have the most yardage? And, and Stefan Diggs, I think, was the third most popular answer. Do you think we're overthinking Stefan Diggs and that it's as simple as he's your wide receiver one and then the other guys can continue to develop, but that's your guy? Is that being overthought? Another underthought left guard. The competition, maybe maybe they want to improve at uh, left guard. But I think there's, there's plenty of footballs to go around. I actually like the point that C.J. Stroud is used to having multiple guys eat. But is the Stephon Diggs thing being overthought? Is Stephon Diggs just him? No other questions uh, to ask. Is Stephon Diggs being overthought? Wide receiver one. No questions asked. Derek Stingley. Uh, Derek Stingley. He's he's on lock. He's elite. Nothing to worry about. Nothing to see here. Worry about cornerback two. Is that being underthought? Uh, and then left guard. Not pretty last year. What are they going to do? I actually like all the bodies they have. I, I like that they're going to have more guys in camp. Um, what is, is Kenyon Green? Is that really something you're going to rely on? Hopefully not. And I don't think they should be relying on their uh, disappointing guys uh, at all. Business is picking up, though. Uh, tomorrow, need all of y'all here. Um, y'all might not remember this. This was said, yes. This was said uh, on the internet. It had Texans Twitter going nuts. Uh, very, very much so. This was from the Titans Coliseum podcast. This was Mr. Leonard Firestone. A lot of you very angry. Uh, with something that he said about C.J. Stroud, he brought up the name Dak Prescott. This was the comment right here. Let me let me get this up. Y'all were ticked. There's a sophomore slump. There's all these other things. We know how you want to play. We got film. They're going to start scheming out. Defense is going to know how you're going to want to do stuff from an offensive coordinator standpoint. Now, so yeah, you had a good first year, but so did Dak. So did Zeke. They won the most games in Cowboys franchise history their first year. What have they done since? Zeke had to leave. And they maybe bring them back then, but it's it, it's you can't sit here and crown somebody after one year and think it's going to be good. You can't because this next year we're, we're defenses are going to come for you. Oh, you you did all this stuff. You don't think defensive players remember when they almost had you in a sack and you got away and you ran away and you didn't you made a play on them and they keep showing it all off seasons on a highlight reel. Oh. Mm -hmm. Ain't gonna happen to me again. I promise you, I'm getting you down this time. This 
people are studying. There's a sophomore slump. All right, so there you go. Those three guys on the Titans Coliseum podcast. Here's how it's going to work. It is going to... What does CS292 mean? Men gossiping like little girls is underrated. I don't know what that means. What is what is gossip? I think he's talking about them. I think they're just talking ball. They're just having a good time. Um, but we're going to have these guys in the, in the building tomorrow. This is how it's going to go. It's lined up 1030. All three of them. Morocco T. You might, you, you might see some of his Titan uh, videos. He's hilarious. He's the one that's like, yeah, mother. Um, he's going to be here. Um, they're going to have their whole podcast here. We're going to embrace perhaps the best rivalry in the South. Uh, there's a little bit, it's kind of the draft lag, the downtime, uh, the, the old Oilers, Texans, all that. We're going to have him explain his DAC comments. And here's the best thing about it. I'm going to open up the lines and let Texans fans weigh in as well, as well as Titans fans. So It'll be a back and forth. It'll be fun. We will embrace the rivalry. We'll have all of them in, and we will get to see uh, just the state, the mindset of Titans fans, and we'll we'll get to uh, go back and forth on some of the topics, and it'll be fun, and we'll also um, have some of you or whoever, um, whoever wants to get in. Super Chats go to the front. Uh, bad calls don't just get through and we're really not just trying to yell and scream at each other. Uh, we're trying, we're trying to have some fun with this, uh, and embrace it. So we're going to have them here. It'll be fun. Um, a week from tomorrow, uh, draft mania, we will have, um, John Harris in the building live. It'll be a Q and a probably going to go at least an hour and a half. Cause he likes to talk a lot. He's a pretty heavy winded guy. Uh, one of my good buddies, John Harris is going to come in. He's going to preview every damn position. We're going to go through every damn scenario of this draft, uh, next Wednesday. So we got a lot going on. It's going to be a lot of fun. The locker room always is draft time always is. And, and a reminder, I do not want y'all to miss out on this. If you like my channel, you like Cody Stute's channel, you like figgy fig, uh, best in the world at what he do. Uh, and one of my, uh, one of my co-hosts, uh, slash producer, uh, on Sports Radio 610, we got a uh, locker room Houston football draft watch party. Here's here's the thing. Let me explain this. So my favorite thing in school was to go to school the day after a big sporting event, sit in the cafeteria before the bell rang, and just talk about what went down. You're basically having like your own your own conversation. This has never gotten old to me. This is something that you know a lot of lot of. People that get in the business, they're just doing it for whatever, the money, whatever, and they start half-assing it. I love it. I absolutely love it. I love doing it with Texans fans. I enjoy it. So I also enjoy the draft. Not too long ago, back in the day, I used to throw the biggest draft party you've ever seen. A few hundred dollars on liquor, multiple kegs, multiple punches, jello shots that from from the two-day format onto the thursday format it's always been my thing the draft has always been my thing you know that was back like magazines all that crap i love it those worlds are going to collide those are two of my favorite things because on saturday at daily sports club april 27th we're going to have the opportunity to react with the people to the texans day two which is going to be the first time they draft in the moment we're going to get to enjoy what's going on with the live action. Oh, by the way, we've already asked them, and they're going to put it over the speaker. Sometimes you go to a bar and watch the draft. You don't get to hear it. It's going to be over the speaker. So we're going to hear everything going on. We're going to hear all the picks and that, and we're going to be mingling at a hell of a spot. A lot of good food, a lot of good drink. We're going to get some specials. It's going to be fun. We're going to start at 11. We're going to take it up to the draft. Myself, Stutes. Uh, Figgy, uh, I've talked to a lot of other people. I think they're going to come through. I talked to uh, Mr. 713 Ruben, maybe him and Harley will come through. We just want as many people as possible uh, in this community. This is not a station event. This is a uh, a locker room, Houston football, Figgy Fig uh, media event, and we want as many of you as possible. It's going to be fun. Um, cuss, discuss, uh, all that type of stuff. Uh, and we're going to get it. Uh, first round on me, perhaps. If you get me at the right time, that's very possible. Uh, very, very possible. Young Costa, if you come up to me, I got you, brother. Um, you just got to say, yeah, remember me. 
uh, I brought that up. So it's going to be uh, it's going to be a fun time. Um, and I'm, I'm really excited for it. So come through, enjoy it. Uh, appreciate everyone for coming through on the channels. Um, the, the, the uniform unveiling is going to be the 23rd. I'll be out there as well. 713 music call. I, I saw the uniforms. Um, they had that stupid ass NDA. Can't say anything despite the league. The, the, the only thing I can say is there, there's one that I really don't like. Um, and it's not it's not the road. There's there's one that I really, really don't like. I think it might actually be one of the worst uniforms in the league. Uh, that's all I'm gonna say though. And I might have already said too much. Appreciate you for coming through. Subscribe, like, ride along. Uh, this has been the locker room uh, on YouTube. Get your ass to Daily Sports Club. It's gonna be a fun time. Uh, and it's always a fun time with y'all. Appreciate y'all. Uh, all love, all fun, great times, great vibes. Uh, Titan versus Houston uh tomorrow. Uh, it's gonna be fun. Let's keep it rolling. We the post of the city Let's too. Landlock, got the game in the headlock. Localized every time. Can't stop, won't stop. Yeah, we top two and we not two. Plugged in daily digital on YouTube. Uh, we got taste for days. Opinions to give, we got takeaways. Uh. If it's up, then it's up. We number one. You don't need to try your luck. Uh uh. Uh uh. Locker room, yeah, we in the locker room. Texas talk, yeah, you know what we about to do. Localize every angle's what we really do. We the source, we the pulse of the city too.